Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 1 February 2016. Oh, golly. You guys know, those of you who have been around the channel for a while, that um, I've got a few guys that are in the YouTube knife community or knife community in general that I sort of would call close friends, one of whom is, or was, Derek Bone at KnivesShipFree.com, the best place to buy knives, period. Uh, yeah, he got me. He got me good last Friday. See, I subscribed to this thing uh, on the internet, the Knives Ship Free weekly newsletter. It comes right to my email. Not only that, um, but Derek got a brilliant idea last week of making a video to put out the day before the newsletter every week, you know, to get the saliva glands producing uh, the day before the newsletter comes out. So the first week he does this video, um, he has a sale the next day in the newsletter exclusive to newsletter subscribers for a $50 discount on a Bark River knife. That was Friday. This is Monday, the Monday after the Friday. And here you see a brand new shiny white Bark River Knives box. He got me. He got me. My former friend, Derek Bone. It is the Springbok. Interesting knife. We'll talk about it a little bit, and I'll even show it to you. Be right back, my friends. I'd like to take a moment to welcome you to the Apostle P channel. If you are a regular viewer or subscriber, uh, thank you for your continued support. If you're a new viewer or someone who stumbled upon this video as the result of a Google search or other search engine looking for specific content about this particular issue or product, I thank you for being here. And I'd invite you to subscribe to my channel. I upload about three to four videos a week. Uh, they could be knife videos, other gear related or firearms related videos. And every once in a while, we'll sprinkle in a little bit of Christ's gospel message. And also, please like the video uh, with the thumbs up icon or dislike it if you dislike it. And I invite you to share it with your friends on Google Plus or Facebook or other social media. And I always look forward to hearing from you in the comments section. So thanks very much, and let's get on with the rest of the video. Okay, so here was the deal. Last Friday, the Springbok is on the weekly newsletter for $50 off. And frankly, the Springbok was a model that I had sort of overlooked because it had one design characteristic I thought looked a little odd. And Derek said, you know, he thought it would sell better than it did. And he had, you know, almost three pages of spring box left on his website. I don't know how many that is. I didn't count. But there was a pretty good selection. So I thought, you know what? <sighs> Even though it's got some issues, there's some things going for it that I think are interesting. Number one, it's the first knife brought to production for Bark River designed by Jim Stewart, son of Mike Stewart. Uh, number two, it's kind of a robust mid-size belt carry knife that I think could be quite useful. And, you know, I thought uh, with my $50 discount, I got $20 in rewards points at Knife Ship Free. If I go with like a basic canvas micarta, no liners, no mosaic pins, you know, I can probably buy a Springbok for $130, $140 and have a really nice hard use utility fixed blade. Yeah, so much for that. As I got looking at the website, there was such a nice selection and I wanted to make sure that I got uh, the one I wanted. And as I started looking at those doggone gorgeous stabilized wood handles, I saw something that just took my breath away and I justified buying it with 
my $70 in discounts and here it is. Oh guys, you're not going to believe this. Oh my lord. Would you look at that? This is Desert Ironwood Burl. With red liners that I love. <laughs> this knife, oh, would you look at that. Look at the shimmer as I roll that knife. Do you see how that burl catches the light? Oh, man. This knife uh, was $296 <laughs> on the website. Um, so, you know, my original thought was uh, basic micarta handled utility blade for $130-ish. You know, what the heck, even if there's something about the Springbok I don't like, who doesn't want a three and three quarter inch bladed Bark River and CPM 3V for 130 bucks? Well, I saw this handle and I passed it by and I kept coming back to it. <laughs> and very soon, my entire logic pattern had changed <laughs> and it became this. Well, you know, the basic micarta knife would have been about 200 and I can buy a knife that's worth $100 more for another 25 bucks. And isn't it beautiful? Next thing I know, it's in my cart. And three days later, it's here. I went to the post office, picked it up, immediately brought it home and started sharpening oh guys oh I didn't really know you could uh, I didn't know you could get 3v like really sharp but apparently you can. Yeah, you really can. Oh, golly. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm telling you, I'm in love with this thing. Here's what we got. And I encourage you, and I'll probably put a link to this in the description. Um, there's a video, it's only a couple minutes long, on Knife Ship Freeze website. And it's uh, Jim Stewart sitting at a desk with one of these knives, uh, discussing it a bit. And... Um, he made this knife, number one, to fit the hand in an amazingly good way. Um, when you put your hand on this thing, your, your, your fingers land on this handle in a way that just it inspires confidence and power and feels so comfortable. In this uh, standard saber grip, it just puts that point straight ahead in the middle, uh, right where you want it. And then if you roll around uh, to this overhand pinch grip, oh, guys, I wish I wish I had feel a vision. And while I'm in this grip, I have to discuss that one thing that made me not like pictures of this knife. Actually, there are two things, but here, here's one. I thought this point at the front of the handle scale just looked goofy frankly I, I remember passing this knife by uh, when I bought this knife the gunny hunter about the same size by the way uh, I passed this knife by because the handle was to me to my eye just goofy looking um, and then after I bought this I'm trying to get in uh, uh, in Jim's head a little bit and figure why on earth would you do that uh, and remember, uh, Jim, I think, is in his late 20s, and he, he's been designing knives, I think, since he was in pull-ups. Um, this is the first one that made it to production. So how much thought and effort 
and design prowess went into this knife. There had to be a reason. And I thought as I was waiting over the weekend for it to arrive, why would he do that? I bet you it's because we're economizing. It is kind of a short knife, the 3.775 inch blade, about a four and a half inch handle. Is that right? Eight and a quarter inches total. So you have a four and a half inch handle. So how do you get lots of room for your hand? Lots of room. In an eight and a quarter inch total package with a three and a three quarter inch blade, 3.775 actually. Well, you do it um, by making a handle feature that lets you get very far forward in a super comfortable grip. Imagine if that were straight. This thumb pad would be unsupported for a, a quarter inch. And it's perfect. Your thumb just naturally falls right to there where the point is, although the point doesn't uh, press in your pad. It, it, your thumb sort of lays across this straight edge. It's brilliant. And then if you're in a hammer grip and you come way far forward, look how the thumb can lie on the surface of the blade and just naturally around that point. It's really, uh, you know, odd as it may look to your eye, it's a super, super well-designed handle. And it's different than other Bark River handles. It, it has less of a palm swell, less Coke bottle, I should say. Here, let's look at it versus the Gunny Hunter. So, um, flare, thin, big palm swell, thin again, and flare. Okay. Now, on the Springbok, kind of hard to see against the black background, but let's put the box out here. There we go. Narrowest point is right at the front. Just a gentle, well, there's a little swale here, a little concave, but not much. And a, a palm swell that runs much longer as a percent of the total handle length at its full thickness. And then again, a very slight, maybe a slight flare at the back, but not, not shaped like a Coke bottle. Jim just had to be different than the old man. Both handles um, super comfortable. I don't know. <laughs> I love my standard Mike Stewart handle. No, don't get me wrong, but there's oh, there's something about this Springbok. I'm telling you guys, it, it's just so good in all grips. If you're in a hammer grip back here, it's super comfortable. It, like I said, if you come forward and wrap that thumb around the front of the handle, you're still great. The draw cut grip is just awesome. I mean, this spine, the way it lays across your knuckles, oh. Not that you're ever gonna use this in a tactical situation, but if you did, it's about perfect in the reverse grip. Okay, let's talk about the rest of it. Because the rest of it is just a pure just pure gorgeous. Uh, as I said, CPM 3V is our blade steel. And it, almost like uh, um, the Triple Aught Design Dauntless, it's got a drop point blade, or almost you could call it a bayonet style blade. But if you didn't see the swedge, there, if I sort of get the swedge out of the glare, just a nice drop point, but in some, from some points of view, it almost look, emulates a clip point because of the shape of the swedge. That gives us lots of overall thickness, clear out to here, and then a nice fine tip. I mean a nice fine tip. The grind is Oh, what about 70% of the height convex to the edge? Now, when I sharpened this, I did thin it ever so slightly, but not much. It was a pretty thin convex from the factory. Uh, but 
Our blade steel is 156 thousandths, 5 30 seconds of an inch, same as the Gunny Hunter, within a couple thousandths, except a slightly broader blade. So um, our angle of attack is a little more gradual on the Springbok. Here's the other thing I thought looked a little goofy. Look how large that lanyard tube is. There, compare it to the Gunny. Um, I'm not letting go of that one. It's too big. However, <laughs> even though Jim punched too big of a hole in these beautiful desert ironwood burl handle scales, oh man, even though he did that, I am forgiving him <laughs> because the knife is just so darn good. Uh, I mean, it's just so good. A great little all-purpose woods knife. Uh, could you field dress a deer with this or even a squirrel or a rabbit? Yeah, you could. Um, it's an all-purpose blade size, blade shape. Uh, could you split firewood with it? Um, yeah, you could. Tip might be a little, but chew up your baton a little bit. Not, not as good for that purpose as the gunny hunter would be. Jim decided to put a fuller in this blade. Why? To achieve perfect balance? I don't know. Let's see. I'll turn it on its side. Frankly, no, that's not the reason. Because our balance point is a little behind the finger groove. Why? Well, to hear Jim tell it, because it's cool. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> See how we do on symmetry of our plunge grinds. Really nice. And a perfectly executed sharpening chewel. Just enough to get us nice and straight all the way to the back without without creating a big notch to catch on stuff. This is really nice. Just really nice. As you guys know who have been around the crucible menu of steels you know that 3v is not a stainless it is generally used in applications where ultimate toughness is required so uh, fixed blade woods knives that are going to incur contact with hard fibrous media uh, is where 3V excels, and that's exactly what we've got here. I think it's a great steel choice for this knife. And I like the way it sharpens up. Frankly, um, I didn't notice too much difference in sharpening versus A2. Easier than LMAX in Bark River's lineup. Just want to set these knives side by side for you for a couple minutes. Um, just to look at size. And if you guys watched my two videos on the Gunny Hunter, you know that this is a size I really love. You know, uh, blade length about the same as a large Sebenza. And overall length, the blade a little longer, overall length about the same. It's just a size I like to have in my hand. So let's talk about the sheath, and this is going to be kind of a misleading portion of the video. Uh, I'm left-handed, and when I called Tyler at Knives Ship Free to let him know I was going to be putting one of these in my cart and cursing Derek to him, um, I always, whenever I order a Bark River from Knives Ship Free, um, I always call and ask that they swap sheaths for me. Um, before they send the knife out so I don't have to send my right-handed one into Bark River and um, have them send me a lefty back. So the sheath that comes with this knife um, looks almost identical to this except uh, back here on the stitched side it would have a loop for a fire steel which I really could care less about. Um, <laughs> if you keep uh, a Bic lighter and waterproof matches in the Ziploc bag um, you rarely need a fire steel, just, just saying. 
and the, the other difference is that that sheath is embossed sort of around the edge in the shape of the knife blade just a small groove um, other than that I don't think there's any difference in the sheets here's the other cool thing um, I think the gunny hunter comes with a snap retention hunting knife sheath now that makes it very secure um, but it makes the handle kind of flop away from your body so uh, it's it's great if you're falling out of a tree and don't want to drop your knife but um, for daily carry, all that, uh, you know, that handle being able to move like that, no, I'm not a fan. Um, so, as luck would have it, look at this, would you? Hmm, perfect. Both knives fit almost exactly the same in that sheet, which is pretty cool. I was actually thinking about ordering a bushcraft style sheath for my gunny hunter. Now I don't have to. So guys, if you are a, if you're sort of barky addicts like I am becoming, curses on Derek Bone and Mike Stewart and now Jim. Um, if you're one of those guys, one of us guys who pours over hundreds of Bark River pictures on knife ship free at night when everybody else in the house is asleep, and you have not pulled the trigger on a Springbok because maybe it just didn't hit your eye right i'm here to tell you guys get one in your hand and it all changes uh jim stewart bravo my friend bravo keep them coming maybe uh uh maybe you could design us a you know slip joint pocket knife one of these days huh hmm but for now, this is your legacy, young Mr. Stewart, and it's a pretty good one. That's all for this one, my friends. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the word and my springbok are sharp. <laughs>